this is one of those things where to make that great comedy, you got to follow a little bit of fun. I'm not really a big fan of romantic comedies in general. Welcome to the very first episode of Movie Feuds Presents Real-Time Reviews. Much like the great Siskel and Ebert, Corey and I are going to give you our thoughts in movies playing in theaters. You get two reviews for the price of none. Because our show is free. Yeah. I'm going to let Corey kick it off by telling you all why you should run out and see Rise of the Planet of the Apes. Uh, actually, I, I didn't see the movie. What? I didn't see it. We were supposed to go out and see the movie this weekend. Yeah, I know. It was between that, the Smurfs, and the change-up. And that's I, fine, that's I fine, that's fine. I'll, I'll take it. I'll tell everybody why they need to run out and see this movie immediately. This film has great pacing, and the focus stays tight on the main monkey, Caesar. Played by Andy Serkis. The, Andy Serkis, the same guy who was King Kong and I think Gollum? Correct. That guy only plays CGI characters? Correct. And awesome. he plays them well. Awesome. Stick with what you know. Yeah, it's, it's great. He's been around the jungle for a few years and he owns this picture. This thing's got great character development with bits of action sprinkled throughout. All I saw in the trailer was action, so if that's the way the movie went, pacing's a pretty far reach. You're talking about the original, like, full trailer, and I agree with you. That was very action-heavy, but they did come out with the second one later on. You probably missed that. That was a lot slower, and it really it really told a better story, and that was the story that was on the screen. From what I know of Planet of the Apes, it's kind of like iRobot in the fact that, you know, maybe we train, you know, the animals or, you know, versus training or building the robots, and then eventually they go haywire. Let's just say, unlike iRobot, this one builds a much stronger foundation, and it's one that's, that doesn't have a conclusion. So don't go into this thinking, there's a beginning, middle, and end. It's much like the first part of Deathly Hollows. They're building up for something much bigger in the future. Oh, Fox's new cash cow, in other words. Are there any other characters in this, I mean, besides CGI monkeys? John Lithgow was in this, right? I mean, he's, he's pretty solid. Yeah, he, he plays the dad of the main scientist, and he, he's, he's got Alzheimer's. And basically, the entire plot revolves around um, them trying to find a cure for this, so they're injecting it into monkeys. Wait, 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 the, the Deep Blue Sea plot? Instead of, instead of sharks, it's monkeys? It's exactly the Deep Blue Sea plot. The monkeys are getting stronger, smarter. If LL Cool J makes an appearance, I'm all in the, I'm through the doors. Spoiler, he doesn't. So Lithgow did a suitable job, and the computer-generated monkeys looked like real monkeys. Unfortunately, Sir James Franco didn't bode so well. He's not a sir, but I can see James Franco being a little startled because he's only got Spider-Man under his belt when it comes to CGI. Yeah, that's true. 127 hours he did a phenomenal job, and I thought, but I think where he struggled was he's acting in front of imaginary pixie dust in a, in a green screen. You know, he, he can't see anything, so he kinda, can't really react. Kind of like us. Kind of like us. There's really no other human characters to speak of other than, like, Draco Malfoy, who plays Draco Malfoy, very one-dimensional. He's a nice tip to the Potter fans, that's about it. He's got a decade of being Draco Malfoy under his belt, so you can't really break them of that very easily. No, and he, he, does, he does a good Draco Malfoy impression. So I was pleasantly surprised by this film. In fact, it was my breakout blockbuster of the summer that wasn't in the Potter series, of course. Just kind of a breath of fresh air because, you know, most of the movies this summer have been sequels, sagas, you know, all that. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, so there's a couple of dumb plot points, which I'm not going to spoil, like, a major plot hole early on in the film, but just just go see the thing. You'll like it. You'll have a good time, and uh, I'm gonna leave you there. Caesar! More than just reviews. This is Movie Feuds presents real-time reviews.